Let's now bring in former Vice President Mike Pence, whose book, So Help Me God, is available now. We have lots of news on this Monday morning. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Thanks for being Merry here. Merry Christmas. Good morning. Good morning. Good we, to be with just, you. you know, we just did a story, uh, an interview with a gentleman who uh, was a special immigrant visa holder from Afghanistan. His brother is, was trained by us to be an elite forces commando. He's now, right. he made his way through the southern border. He's being held in a prison. Here's what his brother said to us just now what he'd like to tell President Biden. Watch here. The people that come to the borders without any vetting, they, they're being released. But my brother comes with a background, a clear background. He deserves uh, recognition for his service, not to be in prison in and not to be tortured by a country that he f stood alongside. I wondered what you think about this, because it, you, you take the Afghanistan withdrawal chaos, the problems that we have at the right. border, it's this confluence of ineptitude resulting in this man being in prison. What do you think should happen to yeah, him? Yeah, Dana, you couldn't say that better. It is a confluence of ineptitude. I mean, to think about uh, a heroic Afghani soldier who's, who, who risked his life and his family's life to stand with our soldiers, being relegated to having to go to South America, uh, to join this massive movement north of the border, and then he's the one that we put in jail <laughs> when he crosses uh, the border. It, it, it really is extraordinary, and I, I hope the administration is watching uh, and moves quickly to remedy that situation with him. We owe a debt of honor and gratitude to every one of the Afghan soldiers that stood with the brave men and women that yep. fought in Afghanistan on our behalf over those 20 Years, but that being said, let me tell you, I was down to the border uh, twice over the last year, uh, uh, and uh, the most jarring thing that I heard more than nine months ago was that the car cartels are in operational control of our border today. Literally, I stood in Cochise County uh, at a section of the border where, literally, on day one, President Biden ended construction of the border wall. And so you see all these girders laid out in the sunshine, rusting in the sunshine. And a hundred yards across the border, you could see a lookout nest to the cartels, that they literally decide who comes in. So if and the crisis there, in El Paso so this week tells you all you need and, to know. And you see that. Other people go down there and see right. that. And Dana and I have been talking about why the rest of the media has not been reporting on this up until really about the last week. About the last and, week. Now, when the Biden administration came in, there was this thinking that they want to do the opposite of whatever you and former President Donald right. Trump did. And, and maybe it was a, you won't do DACA, so we're going to allow this to happen. Maybe it was the border policies of separating families, so we're going to do the opposite of that. Can you help us understand why the administration has been so, um, you could call it inept, or you could call it no, refusal I to... Um, do something. Yeah, Bill, I, I don't, I don't call it inept. I, it's, it's operating exactly as those that advocate open borders wanted it to operate. I mean, look, we, we ended uh, illegal immigration and asylum abuse by 90 percent under a combination of a border wall, internal enforcement, the remain in Mexico policy uh, that I negotiated on the president's uh, behalf with Mexican officials and Title 42 that we put into effect in those early days of the COVID pandemic. The combination of those things ended the crisis at our border. Yep. But when Joe Biden took office and the open borders crowd was in the saddle in the Congress and in the White House, how did they, they benefit did all of that? How did they the benefit happened. from how did they benefit from open borders? I, I, you know, I would leave that to I don't like speculating on people's motives, but I, I'm somebody that believes that a nation without borders is not a nation. Uh, but I, it, my hope is that seeing 15,000 people come in in a single week in yeah. El Paso, having the Democrat mayor of El Paso declare a state of emergency might just mm -hmm. <laughs> jar this administration into uh, holding off on undoing Title 42, which was incredibly effective uh, under our administration. And for heaven's sakes, the remain in Mexico policy was That's just good. common yeah. sense. President Trump made it clear there would be consequences if Mexico did not step up and no agree way. to allow people to wait in Mexico when they applied for asylum. 
we stood firm. We accomplished that. Well, we we'll can see. secure He's, our border and end this crisis the border at all. leadership. The one thing that they're very focused on, though, um, is the January 6th committee. And yeah. the committee now says that they have enough evidence, they say, sufficient evidence to charge President Trump. Here's Adam Schiff, the Democrat from California, on that. I think that the evidence is there that Donald Trump committed uh, criminal offenses in connection with his efforts to overturn the election. Um, and viewing it uh, as a former prosecutor, um, I think there's sufficient evidence to, to charge the president. There's been a build up to this moment. What do you think of it? Well, I've said many times, having lived through that day at the Capitol, Dana, that January 6th was a tragic day. Uh, but thanks to the courage of law enforcement, the violence was quelled. We reconvened the same day and finished our work under the Constitution of the United States. But I must tell you, from very early on, I've been disappointed in the partisan nature of the select committee on Capitol Hill. I mean, to have a committee that was literally appointed uh, in its entirety by the Democrat Speaker of the House mm -hmm. really violates the history and tradition of the Congress of the United States. You may not remember, in 2007, um, I was the ranking member on a select committee that looked into voting irregularities that had taken place on the floor of the Congress. We had proper representation of both political parties. All political parties were allowed to ask questions of witnesses. We produced a report yeah. uh, at the end. And uh, but, so but this, 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 this select committee from the very beginning has, has, has represented a kind of a, a partisan taint that I, I think it's one of the reasons why uh, so few Americans are paying much attention to what will happen today or to the results or recommendations of this committee. Let me just, uh, um, if you feel that way and answered it that way, yeah. then you don't believe it should be a criminal case that should be referred to the Department of Justice. Is, well, that, is I, that what you're saying? Well, I wrote this in my book uh, that uh, how many times uh, Adam Schiff said that there was evidence of collusion with Russia. Two and a half years we listened to Adam Schiff talk yeah. about evidence that he had seen that, uh, that was never there. Let, but let me, let me be very clear about this point. Uh, uh, Congress has, has no formal role uh, in Justice Department decisions. They can make recommendations today. Uh, but when it comes to the Justice Department's decision about, about um, about bringing charges in the future. I, I would hope that they would not bring charges against the former president. I, I don't, look, I, as I wrote in my book, I think the president's actions and words on January 6th were reckless. Um, but I don't know that it's criminal, it's criminal to Got take it. bad advice from lawyers. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I well, hope the Justice be, Department is careful. There might be criminal on that too. Well, right, so we'll, we'll see on that. Well, but We're Dana, I, I want to tell you, I, I, I hope the Justice Department understands the magnitude of the very idea of sure. indicting a former president of the United States. I think that would be terribly divisive in the country at a time when the American people want to see us heal. At this time of year, we're all thinking about the most important things in our lives, our faith, our family, and my hope is that the Justice Department will think very carefully. And your whole family will be together regard. for the first, all the families getting together for the first time in three years, you told us, which will be very exciting. And well. you, you wrote the book. We have read that you are considering your future. Political had this headline today. It's just Politico, right? It says, uh, Pence has a huge problem. He's struggling to find his path back to the White House. Do you think you would make a decision after the holidays as to whether you would get in for the presidency? And if not the presidency, would you be open to running in that Senate seat in Indiana? Well, I would tell you, I've had the privilege of serving in Congress in the House of Representatives, um, governor of Indiana and vice president of the United States. Yeah. It's an incredible privilege for me. And uh, my family is going to take time uh, over this holiday season uh, when we're all together for the first time in three years to give prayerful consideration uh, to where we might next step forward to serve our country. Uh, but for us, it's always about a calling. I mean, I, if, if you read my book, Dana, and I'd be honored if you did, you'll find early in my political career, I allowed yep. my ambition to get ahead of my Christian faith, what I thought my faith required of me in the public square. Uh, but the last 20 years, it's been about a calling and about trying to respond to that call. So we're, we're going to listen to one another. We're going to pray. We're going to continue to listen to the American people, and um, sometime in the course of the next year, I think we'll be able to discern that, and I yeah. promise we'll go Is the Senate we'll race at all a possibility? 
You know, I served as president of the Senate uh, yeah. for four years, and that was a great That's, privilege. Was that but, enough? Uh, for us, I, I, I would tell you that the extraordinary experiences that we've had in our life, uh, the response that we've gotten to telling our story in my book, So Help Me God, the encouragement from around the country has us just thinking about maybe uh, maybe one more season of service, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. that's the one we're focused on. Okay, we'll put you down as a maybe. <laughs> or, or, or even a I took it as a no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for the possible White House run, but maybe a no for the Senate run. That's I, how I took it. I think if if uh, if if we were ever to step forward to serve uh, the American people, it would be to take all the experience that we've had and and run for national office. Yeah. And uh, and but I'm always humbled to be asked. You know, somebody asked me the other day if I ever thought about running for president, and I said, no more, no less than any other kid that grew up with a cornfield in his backyard. So. <laughs> thank well, you for your time. Have a good you. holiday, okay? Great to see you. Mike Pence, thank you for coming thank in today. You. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.